Assalamu alaikum. So this is Fun with Ruha and we are back with another story book Honor by Alif Shafak. I am going to tell you the summary of this book so that you can understand the story and also make you eager to read this book. So this is the dedication of this book. When I was 7 years old we lived in a greenhouse. One of our, one of our neighbors, our talented tailor, would often beat his wife. In the evenings, we listened to the shouts, the cries, the swearing. In the mornings, we went on with our lives as usual. The entire neighborhood pretended not to have heard, not to have seen. This novel is dedicated to those who hear and those who see. Alif Shafak Honor is the story of three generations of a culturally split Turkish Kurdish family that undergoes yet another cultural division when it migrates to London. The story starts when Naz, who had always wanted to have a boy, gives birth to twin girls whom she names Kadar meaning destiny and Yatar meaning enough. So, we are going to read the summary. Honor A novel by Turkish novelist Alif Shafak follows three generations of the Turkish Kurd Toprak family to uncover the deep roots of Skandar Toprak's honor killing of his own mother. Dedicated to those who see and those who hear. The novel dissects the particular form patriarchy takes in Turkish communities and furiously criticizes the normalization of violence against women. The novel was warmly received by critics who felt that Shafak turns what might seem a plomic against honor killing in lesser hands into a searing but empathetic and ultimately universal family tragedy. The novel opens in the voice of British Turkish Asma as she reflects on the events that led to the imprisonment of her brother Skandar. He was only 16 years old when he stabbed their mother, Pambi, on the steps of the family home in Hackney, London. Asma has thought often of killing Skandar in revenge, but now she is prepared to take him in and help him readjust to life outside prison. The murder was investigated as an honor killing, with the police seeking to establish whether the teenage boy acted on his own initiative or at the prompting of his wider family. Skandar who goes by Alex with English people, became the focus of an outcry against a barbaric Muslim custom. As he explained from his cell, a journalist came to see me. She visited, she visited me a few times, seemed to be on my side. Please rest assured, Alex. I only want to understand the story and increase awareness in society by writing about you. How novel is that? When she goes and pens the shittest article, I was mucked around with as a child. It was all mum's fault as the elder son I had been spoiled by her. This is a typical case of Middle Eastern patriarchal tradition, blah, blah, blah. From here, the novel makes back more than half a century to the beginning of a multi-generational saga. In a Kurdish area of Turkey, a woman named Naz knows it is her duty to produce a son. This is a place where women grieve for the birth of a daughter. Instead, she has twin girls whom she names Kadar, meaning destiny, and Yata, meaning inner. Her husband worrying that these names dare fate renames them 
Pambi and Jamila. The girls come to be known as Pambi Kadar, Pink Destiny and Jamila Yatta, Inner Beauty. The girls are identical in appearance but very different in character. A young man named Adam falls in love with Jamila but when Jamila is abducted by another man, Adam and their whole community regard Jamila's honor as compromised. Adam marries Pambi instead. It is clear from the first that this partnership is doomed, but the young couple moves together to Istanbul where they have their first child, Skandar, and then on to London where Asma and finally Yunus were born. Meanwhile, Jamila remains in their home village, refusing to marry. She becomes a semi-legendary virgin midwife, a lone woman who travels under the protection of God to assist in difficult births. In London, freed from the restraints of Turkish customs, Pambi and Adam seek fulfillment outside their relationship. Nevertheless, they continue to cling to their own version of Turkish and Kurdi values. The native land remained immaculate as Shangri-La, a potential shelter to return to, if not actually in life, at least in dreams. In practice, this means that Adam has more freedom than Pambi to pursue the love that is not present in their marriage. He starts gambling and begins an affair with Ruksana, who works as an escort at one of his favorite gambling venues. By the late 1970s, Adam has gambled away his family's money and abandoned them. Forced to support her children by herself, Pambi takes a job at a local hair saloon where she comes into her own and assimilates more closely into the British way of life. Eventually, she meets Elias, an enthusiastic cook and film buff with whom she meets in secret and old movie theater. Still enslaved to traditional values, Pambi not only keeps their relationship a secret, but also but insists on its being purely platonic. Meanwhile, Pambi's children have each coped in a different way with the challenge of growing up as a Turkish girl in a foreign city. Skander, born in Turkey and raised as a little sultan by his mother, who never ceased to regard her birthing a boy as an achievement. Remains traditional in outlook, his loyalty to Turkish and Muslim values hardens as a result of racist bullying. Soon he is part of semi-radicalized gang of Muslim youth. The youngest sibling, Yunus, becomes immersed in 1970s London's hype subculture at the age of seven. He is taken up as a kind of mascot for the hypes of a nearby squad. Wise beyond his years, he absorbs their values and ends up with a tattoo. While Yunus adopts an extreme form of Western liberalism and Skandar becomes increasingly, increasingly radicalized, bookish, Asma must try to keep the peace in her family, seeking a way to accommodate both set of values. Skandar becomes increasingly convinced that there is no meaningful way for them to assimilate. We Toprak's were only passers-by in this city, a half-Turkish, half-Kurdish family in the wrong end of London. One by one, each member of the family learns of Pambi's affair Back in Turkey, Jamila understands from a dream that her twin is in trouble. Her extensive network of contacts provide her with a means of travel to London without papers. The last member of the family to learn of Pambi's affair is her little Sultan Skandar. When he does, he decides that in his father's absence, it is incumbent on him 
to defend the family's honor by killing her. However, he arrives at the family home as Jamila arrives from Turkey. Mistaking his aunt for her identical twin, Skander kills Jamila. In the aftermath of Jamila's death, Pambi renounces not only her affair but also her identity. She moves back to Turkey to live as her murdered sister. While Skander has been in prison, much has changed. Adam, abandoned by Roxana, has killed himself. Skander has changed too, as he hopes to redeem himself and earn his mother's forgiveness. It falls to Asma to explain that his mother has long since died of a rare disease. So this was the summary of this book. I hope you like it. Please message me in the comment section. What is the change that you want to bring in this society?